Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and I'm doing a cool presentation on my YouTube here, and I'm talking about stuff, and there's animations happening. I'm going over to the next slide to talk about .NET, and now I'm over here, and I'm saying something, and I'm doing a thing, and then, what? I'm in a circle. That's cool. And then, wah, I'm back over here. That's pretty cool, right? Lots of premiere, lots of hard work, video editing, zero. That was all done in camera. Let's talk about how we did it. Hey friends, uh, now I'm back over here. I'm gonna do a screencast and try to explain to you a thing that I made that makes me happy. Um, so I do a lot of presentations like this and I use a tool called OBS. And OBS, I've done other videos on, you can check it out. You can see me here and I'm talking and I've got these different scenes and scenes are just layouts of different components. So for example, a speaker plus an image plus a microphone can be a scene. And I can move around in my scenes like this. And say, here's me over here and there's some stuff there. And here's me here, it's kind of cool. Now right now I'm doing a screencast of me in this tool that I like to use. Now. There's lots of different ways to do really effective screen casts. Sometimes people will go and put themselves in the corner. I do that a lot. You'll see me do stuff and I'll have a screen cast. But I also do a lot of PowerPoints. And sometimes when you're in a PowerPoint, uh, you wouldn't mind having yourself in there. But I tend to put myself in the corner. So we had an idea that what if you could be a little bit more in control? of what your PowerPoint looked like. So what if you could do something like this? What if I could have a green screen and I could put myself in that green box? That'd be really cool. So what I can do, I can put that green box up on one screen, okay? And then I could make myself really small. I could take myself here in OBS and go, make myself small and that would be cool all right and then I could do something like this so now I'm in that box what we did here is we did a display capture of that screen that the PowerPoint is on and then put myself there and in display capture we say filters and we do a green screen. Now there's a couple of small issues. You can see that this chair over here looks goofy. I can fix things like that by changing my similarity. So there you go, now I fixed that, right? How green is the green that I wanna pick? I can find a nice, there you go, I fixed that. And that is a chroma key effect filter that you can put on. So I'm saying, take the PowerPoint, punch out the green and then I made a little box and I put myself in that little box. So that's really cool. But the missing part is that when you do a PowerPoint, sometimes you have cool slide animations. You have cool slide animations. So let me show you a cool slide animation. I'm gonna put that on the primary monitor. But then it's like, hey, here's, here's a thing. Now I'm going to make it small, and now I'm going to make it show some things, and now I'm going to make it go over here, and now I'm going to make it go in a box. So then you can imagine a world where I would have a bunch of slides that would look like this. And what I want to do is I want to change my scene in OBS each time we do that. So that'd be cool. So then I could potentially do something like this. So I've got my thing over here and I could say, look, there's my name. That's the PowerPoint slide. And then I could go like this, but watch. If I go to the next slide, my head's giant. So I need to go to the next scene in OBS to make sure that it fits. And if I go over to that one with a, with a circle in it, how do I get over there? Well, I need to 
make myself go over there. I need to drag myself over there. See, here I am. And then I punch a hole in the circle. So now I have a situation where I'm changing slides in PowerPoint and I'm changing scenes in OBS. And that's really annoying. So I solved that problem by pushing two buttons. Change the slide, change the scene, change the slide, change the scene. It was really annoying. So then we had the idea, hang on. Couldn't I automate OBS? Could I tell the open broadcasting software to change the scene automatically? Well, you can do that in some ways. You can use a stream deck and you can push the button. That's a way of automating it. But OBS also has a thing called a WebSocket server. So if you go to tools and you have this extension that says WebSocket server settings. It listens on port 444. It's basically an API server. So I, now I can tell it to do stuff. But how would I tell PowerPoint what to do? Well, what if I could go into PowerPoint and then in the notes field, I could put a little thing. I just decided to say OBS colon. This is where people put their notes, right? So I'll just put the name of the scene I want in the notes field. So then what I want to do is I want to say when the slide changes, look for a text that says OBS colon, grab the scene, and then change the scene in OBS. So I need a little application that will do that little bit of orchestration. So what I did is I took a little bit of code from two of my friends. First, C Sharp Fritz, lovely streamer who has some code that shows how to talk to OBS which uses a thing called obs.websocket.net, oops, which is written by Alexander Schmid. So kudos to Alexander. So there's a little library there. And then some code from Jimmy Engstrom that shows how you can connect to PowerPoint and an, any event that PowerPoint has. So PowerPoint can do next slide or this or that or whatever and then you can pull information out of the notes. So could I combine those things? Let's find out. I will go over here now. Again, this is a screencast, a little different than what I usually do, but I still think it's pretty cool. Plus we're less than 10 minutes, so we're gonna get this whole thing done in 10 minutes and you're gonna know how to do this. Now, this is not a product. This is kind of a thing for coders right now, but I'm working on making it something else. So I've got a, and it's probably not very good code. This took about 90 minutes to write. Um, we're going to talk to PowerPoint and we're going to listen to OBS. We'll look at that in a second. And I say, hey, connecting to PowerPoint, dot, 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 set up my event. Let me know when the next slide shows up. Let's connect to OBS. I'll show you that in a second. And then we go and we say, hey, I have moved to slide number two. And then we look at our notes. We look at the notes inside of our PowerPoint to see the text for some reason. The text starts at shapes at two. You can blame them for that, I don't know. I thought it would be at zero or one. If there are notes, then we see if the notes start with OBS colon. If it does, we read that line, yank out OBS colon, and then we blindly throw out that scene over in the notes. So what's cool about this is if we look back at OBS, and then we look at our slide, and we see here, local speaker with desktop, local speaker with desktop. When those line up, things just work. Okay, and then the way that we communicate with OBS is pretty interesting. It's very simple. Remember that there's an OBS WebSocket server listening on port 444. So all we do is we connect to that server and then we call set current scene. And then there's a little bit of cleanup code there. That's nothing to worry about. So this is not that complicated. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to run this. So this is going to run and I'll put it over here. And then I'll put me here and then my PowerPoint is here. I'm going to run it on this other monitor. So watch. Okay, so that just popped up. This is my Camtasia that I'm using to record with. So you can ignore, ignore that. I'm using that to record. So what I'm gonna do here is notice that I'm on slide one of my PowerPoint. 
It's a big green PowerPoint. You can see it says slide number one over here. I'm gonna hit slide two. Now I zoom in there. Hit slide three, nothing happens, so it changes to a scene that I'm already at. Slide four is the same. Now slide five over here. I've got a little bit of green here that I might need to work on. That's called spill. And I can go into my filters. I can change my chroma key and I can maybe adjust that a little bit. Make it look better. Maybe gradients aren't a thing we're going to want to do. But then look at that. I'm over here. I'm over here. I zoom off into the... Now I'm in a circle. Look at that. How did I do it? Not complicated. Just a PowerPoint slide with a hole in it. Remember, it looks like this. If I can see, look at that. Where am I? Can't see me at all. Isn't that cool? So this, I think, is super fun. But it's worth noting that the, uh, the target audience for this product, people my age who are me, is kind of who I'm focused on primarily as a goal audience. But I think it's kind of neat. It could be an OBS plugin, it could be a PowerPoint plugin, but there's not much going on here. This is real typical left hand, right hand code. Get some information, where do we store it? Could have put it in a database, could have put it in JSON, didn't need to, put it in the notes field of PowerPoint. Grabbed an event, could have been pushed from PowerPoint into OBS, could have been pulled from an OBS plugin, uh, pulled from PowerPoint into OBS and then changed the scene. But in this case, did it with an orchestrator, this orchestrated application. And we did that with that little bit of code that we saw from our, and we did that with that little bit of code that we saw from our friends, uh, Jimmy and C Sharp Fritz, thank you for your help. And then I put it up here at PowerPoint OBS Scene Switcher. This is not an executable yet, but I'll, I'll go and I'll put in a little uh, CICD, they call it continuous integration, continuous deployment, and I'll have this thing pop up executables if you want to play with it. Um, two hours of code, not a product. So lower your expectations. I thought this might be fun. It made me happy because I was doing it, and then I went, and then there was no one here that would care. So maybe you care, and that's why I recorded this. Uh, thank you very much, and please subscribe if you like things like this. And if you don't, uh, just stop with the downvotes. It's just so negative. Very negative. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.